right. Alrighty, guys. So, welcome to Bernice Dry Sky uh, YouTube channel. Channel. I can never say channel channel right but anyhow um i'm gonna be continuing his enemy enemy and his friend by john r tunis and i did put up uh chapter one and two in one video but on chapter three you are gonna have to read it and um yeah but right now i am continuing with chapter four I'm going to go with four, five, and uh, four and five in this video. In the next video, I'm going to be doing six, seven, and eight. But yeah, let's get to reading. Chapter four. Right, let me find out where my mask is. <laughs> I mean, not my mask. Sorry, guys. Um, the federal level Haynes, as a boy called him, sat on the stone steps of his billet. In the pleasant spring sunshine, he rose and yawned. If the glorious Rishagwa, I don't know some of the words, but there, it is Jewish words though, so I'm just letting you guys know. Um, the German army didn't think so much of him. As a soldier, he, in turn, didn't think much of, I'm just going to call him R. He was hardly passionate about roll calls, drills, medals, uniforms, sal saluting, family traditions, army traditions, national traditions. All of this seemed to mean little to him. He could easily have obtained a commission through his connections. But the officer corpse, uh, oh my gosh, so yeah, this is my bed, guys. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like trying to, okay, now you guys are looking at my blanket, okay. Um, so he always says, oh, actually, let me, okay, he, where was I at now? Okay, national, I'm just gonna continue at national tradition. All this seemed to mean little to him. He could easily have obtained a commission through his connections. But the officer corpse, um, with its case, uh, feel nauseous. Oh my gosh, not seated him. Once you get to be an officer, seem a ligament, I don't know that word. He always said someone, it, oh my gosh, said everyone below you suspects you. Now with a thin dog near him. The boy, as usual as his side, he picked up a clipboard and clipboard with papers attached, stuck with his empty pipe of his pocket, and and walked down the grand rear and past the sign Judel Verbitten with the name of the general commanding officer underneath. The boy did not notice it. That sign banishing Jews had been there for years, which was forever a Jean Paul Varn. It dated back so far he could not remember when it hadn't been there. His father, he will, he well knew, hated it, but there it was, part of the town like the Grand Rear. The cliff on which the town stood and the ocean below, down on the street they walked, the French boy and the German supply sergeant. Since they were in um, invariably together, nobody took this at, as strange. The her boss this morning was uh, hardly Hitler's ideal of a soldier of the gr greater rich. He wore a rather grubbly tunic and Angel Garson cap. If his bearing and general attitude did not express contentment, neither did he appear dissatisfied his job. The boy beside him, he simply walked along greeting those who greeted him. Clack, 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 clack. His heels sounded on the concrete pavement, not clack, clack. Clack, clack. 
short, sharp, brutal, as the, those of the most soldiers sounded, but lecture, I don't know that one, sorry, um, in a slow cadence at the end of the va- village, the sergeant and the boy reached the basement lot, beside the small church, the thin, lonely dog had skimpered ahead and now was in the middle of the road sitting and waiting as often at this time of day the pure clement the village uh priest was coaching renee lay garless with a football or balloon as the french called it the fundamental um, hands liked the padre who had been retired to this backwater when the occupation submerged everyone still active at 70 he especially enjoyed coaching and the the football players for he had been the great athlete himself in the youth this morning peru settlement um sotain was tied up around his waist with the coarse rope so he could run this arrangement disclosed thick cotton underwear under drawer heavy black wool stockings reached to his knees and uh, rough pleasant boots badly scuffed and scarred the padre in his time at the nagent plat has developed many young football stars and the league glotz boy with whom he was practicing with his best of all. The Hermost stood watching, sucking on his empty pipe, throwing an occasional suggestion of the word of advice. Finally, he could no longer resist getting into it himself, glancing up at the street to make sure the fi- uh, new fire-eating, oh my god, hop Tom and commanding that the battery was engaged in his office he yawned he yanked off his tunic snapping the button on his process the button bounced and rolled he let it go attending to pick it up later placed his tunic on the grass laid clipboard beside it and stepped forward immediately something inside changed now he was in his world in his oh my gosh element master of himself um his big frame loose and coordinated his control the round ball with his feet among delicacy pushing a short stab over the padre taking it back turning it across the uh boy with the isolated a courtesy beauty to watch a spurt past the old man a short step to the right and dodge the boy, then to the left to catch the pair off balance. All the time he was babying the ball until he had Rene and the Peru cl- climate. Oh my gosh, settlement! So confused that they were ducking first one way, then the other, totally unsure of themselves. The boy in the blue shorts stood um, transfixed, his body moving as the fundamental move twisted stopped and ran two young women going past watched fascinated ah they said in at admiration at no gent plague whenever the fundamental haynes played football which with the boys a crowd gathered if he was on the beach crowding coaching the regimental team a gang of the local lads always sat on the seawall commenting so this morning half a dozen younger boys suddenly appeared from nowhere the second he begun to play now he was concentrating upon Rennie's movies moves now now no no not with the right foot and left you must learn to pass equally well with either foot. Don't shoot too soon. Take your time. You have time. 
Watch the ball and keep your head down. Just watch the ball. Try to remember your teammates are all watching you. They will get it if you if your pass is a good one. Be careful. Don't lift your head. That's better. Lifting the head is always fatal. He was no longer the casual fundamental. Now he had become a wonderful, moving, vibrant force. The great athlete, the very also of ball control, master of himself and his well-coordination body. When he took the ball, so explain what he meant with the cross or a kick. He seemed almost to caress it. One of his young women watching glanced up the street as she heard the door slam. She saw the new commanding officer step out of the blotch villa, heard a clicking of heels that res- resounded down the grand rear, observed the sentry's presentine arms, her all blast, she said, her all best, dear Hobman common. The coach is coming. The athlete stopped instantly, picking up his tunic, uh, hesitantly put it on, and reaching to the ground for his pipe and the clipboard. Again, become the nondescript fundamental. His garrison cap on one side of his head. He stuttered off towards the blockhouse for the morning report. Now an hour overdue. The dog rose and followed him. At that moment, the fundamental noticed a little dischamps girl in the middle of the road, about 15 yards ahead. Even, uh, evidently, the child had strayed from home. There she stood, a target for passing military vehicles. He got down on the knee and called her, Here, ladily, come here. The, cha- the child turned to look. She was adorable in her faded pink dress and tiny skirt, so short and shrunken from constant washing and that it flared out from her thin legs. The big man held out his arm. It was not presciently the typical picture of the German soldier in France in the 15th year of the occupation. Instantly, the child responded to Toddling towards the fundamental, her arms also outstretched. Then the door of the house banged open, and the girl's uh, mother rushed up to the fundamental, knowing she did not understand German. She said in French she was in at the middle of the street. The woman took the child from him and began to scold her. Frightened, the little girl started to cry. Together they went into the house, leaving the fundamental Haynes in the road, and the stray dog at his side. He walked briskly down the street towards the block house, and as he did, the dog again rose and followed along. End of chapter four. All right, guys, I'm going to let you guys take a break, get something to drink, and uh, we'll be back with chapter five. All right, continuing on to chapter five. By noon, a wind had arisen, bringing a chill from the water. The fog was burning off as it so frequently did. At this time of the year, superficially, it was like every day in Nagent Plague. But there were signs of things to come. Formations of large planes pass over the village all morning, roaring off into the interior. What did they protend? Were they the usual attacks on bridges, railroad yards, airfields, along Paris? Who could tell? George George Vern, the teacher, sat alone at the small iron table on the pavement before the Baru Martin chatting with... I'm just going to call him Mon, uh, Levine, the prop terrier, a 
heavy set man of 45 with a dirty white apron around his waist. On the table was a, a cup of bitter coffee made of acorns and heaven knows what. The results of uh, wartime shortages. Another cup, Mon, the professor, asked the pardon. Mon Varn was no more a professor than the fiddleman Hain was a colon. Uh, colonel. Being only the village schoolmaster, however, everyone called him professor since he had studied two years in Paris and he was an educated man, one to be treated with respect. All right, hold on one second. I'm going to see how much pages we have. All right. Um, let me reread that. However, everyone called him Professor since he had studied two years in Paris and was in an edu- and and was an educated man, one to be treated with respect in the village. He was useful in various ways. For instance, he helped the farmers across the dunes who could n- neither read nor write by penning letters for them in a script full of flourish to their sons in German prisons camps, dark, small, stocky, art calculated. Uh, he used to wear glasses, for he was nearsighted. Unfortunately, they had broke, and as no new ones were obtainable, even a cane or rowan, he carried a pocket magnifying glass to read the uh, common cues in the daily papers. Whenever he read, his forehead wrinkled and his eyes, his eyebrows rose. Though accepted by everybody, Mon Varen was not popular with the right-thinking church-going up part of Nodjik Plague. He was the Marxist and regularly voted the communist tickets, a fact he never concealed from anyone, yet, even though he who disliked him, the distrust his potential conventions respected him as a good uh, Frenchman. He had he not for, fought three years in the World War, been wounded and returned to combat again. He had been called to the colors and serves through the whole campaign of 1940 as a non-commissioned officer in the frontline unit all of his life george varn and his family had lived in nodging plog early in the occupation he became acquainted with the f- field webble pain they respected each other and had a love of music in common Slowly over the years, they became friends. In times of trouble, there had been instances when only the teacher, through the fundamental Hames, had managed to get German headquarters and came to listen to the protests of the villagers. One Marcel, a dischance, the fisherman, had lost his bearings in the dense fog and against regulations did not reach shore until the next morning ordinarily he would have been imprisoned for his offense but the fundamental hand saved him so that he received the warning only few villagers i'm gonna move my phone right here all right few villagers felt there was anything wrong between the schoolmaster and the german sergeant or considered Mon Varn the collaborator and friend of the Nazis. Not only did he despise co- collaborators, he invariably spoke to Marshal Pentain, head of the French collaborationist Rigamen, as the old donkey. So Marn- Mon Varn, though not entirely popular, found his friendship with the fundamental accepted 
because it helped the town in much of the same way that Flood Mental was accepted by his super superiors. Because of the background and army connections, the fundamental talked freely and frankly to an old family friend, Mayor Kessler, at gented headquarters of the Northern Command. Usually, Major Kessler was acceptable for to the fundamental on the telephone in a tight moment. The officer had charge of the garrison and nonjent plague, then this and obtained favors for himself through the sub the sergeant on the staff at headquarters in Clean. They regarded Vaughn Glean Ronchant with amusement and indolent I don't know that Yes, a strange uh, chant, chap. Then Vaughn, I'm just going to call him Klein, prefers to remain a fundamental when he could, of course, have a commission. I remember his father well at uh, Vernon in 1917, a brave man. But this lad is different. Ah, uh, well, he saves us a lot of headaches. But his knowledge of people and the region nobody knows them better this each side and all concerned had something to gain by the arrangement of the germans officially ignored the sergeant's relationship of the schoolmaster something irregular between enemies in time of war this morning while mon varen was sitting on the terrace of the bled martin Waiting for the arrival of the Vettel Haynes, the window depotted uh, passed by her late husband, had actually fought in the Franco-Persian War of 1870, and she was a little dried up apple of a woman, weighing perhaps 80 pounds. Uh, bent, bent, and shrunk with age. She always nodded good morning to everyone she met as she proceeded along the grand rear. Her black strip bag contained four carrots, a turnip, an onion for her usual midday meal of soup. Even now starting to simmer on the back of her stove at home, the moment she saw Mon Varen, she stood still and beckoned on him. Uh, Ray glancing, he, oh my god, I can't even pronounce some words. Uh, he rose to meet her. The window, Don, Mo- Don Point, was celebrated in the village of the button holing. People usually grasping the men by the label of their jackets. Also for her bad breath, a compound garlic and red wine consumed twice a day for 80 years. Hence, the teacher did not regard her ap- approach with anti anti I know that word. <laughs> oh, well. Um, as ever, she came close to him, far too close, and seized the label of his jacket as if to keep him from edging off. Maud Varage, she said, would you perhaps care to do a favor for me? Willing, madam, he replied, trying to deceive himself from her grasp. Always a pleasure to be of use to you. Ah, Bon, one can always count upon you, Mon Varen. I wish I could say the same for others in this town. I mention no names. Oh, no, no names. But doubtless you are aware to whom I refer. Well, it is about my grandson. You may remember he was sent off to work in Germany when he became 17 and by the Fritz in their forced labor organization. The totes organization, they called it. He worked in the airplane factory. Such a nice lad, too. Respectfully. Respectful. And honest. And a good Catholic besides, I assure 
Yes, yes, madam. Impossible to bring her to the point, but at least he managed to move back slightly. He was awaiting not only the arrival of Flitzwebel Haynes, but who knows, perhaps a glass of the good German beer. Yes, I remember Michael, a fine boy. What happens, madam? The point. She drew herself up. Ah, adjustment, nothing. You see, each month he wrote me faithfully. I'm all he has left now for over two months, almost three. Mon Varen, nothing. You see, he was 